This video is all about nymphing, but before we start diving into the details, we need to solidify one main principle, and that is the strike zone. Simply put, the strike zone is where those fish are hanging out. Are they munching nymphs on the bottom? Are they hitting emergers as they rise to the surface? Or are they somewhere in between? I want to illustrate this strike zone with a diagram. On the left, we've got a good little fishing hole full of hungry trout. It's springtime, so you got some nymphs living near the bottom and they're starting to grow up. They're making their way to the surface where they're gonna hatch into an adult and fly away. The fish are keyed in on those emerging bugs and hanging out near the middle and top of the water column. On the right, we've got the same fishing hole, but now it's winter time. The fish are trying to conserve energy and bug activity, it's basically non-existent besides maybe a few midges because they're always trying to do something. And so it's pretty clear that we've got two different strike zones going on. On the left, the fish are in the middle or top of the water column and on the right, they're at the bottom. So what does all this talk about the strike zone have to do with nymphing? When you're getting into fly fishing, you're gonna hear a bunch of different terms. Standard nymph rig, Euro nymphing, dry dropper, bounce rig. Yes, the way that you set up these rigs, how you're gonna tie on tip it and use split shot or not use split shot, it's different. There's pros and cons to each rig. But what I wanna clarify is that the purpose of nymphing, regardless of what rig you're using, is to get those flies in the strike zone. So for the remainder of this video, we're gonna only focus on the standard nymph rig. And if you don't know how to set this up, we actually have a separate video about it. Link will be in the description. Now we're gonna focus on this rig because it's easy to set up, it's simple, it's easy to cast, win, win, win. <laughs> and so as a beginner, we're gonna focus on this rig. One of the things that I love about fly fishing is the problem solving aspect. Even if I was at the river the day before, I might get there and the fish are hanging out in a different part of the water column. They're eating different bugs, it's a challenge. And so when I'm out there with my nymph rig, there are two things that I need to get right in order to start putting fish in the net. Number one, I wanna emphasize that this is the most important thing when it comes to nymphing, getting the right depth. That's how you get those flies right in front of the fish, right in the strike zone. So there are three things that I can do to adjust my standard nymph rig in order to achieve the right depth. Number one is adjusting the size of my fly. If I wanna go deeper, I'm gonna tie on a bigger fly or one with a bigger bead, maybe even a tungsten bead. If I'm too deep or getting caught up on the bottom, I'm gonna switch it out for a smaller fly or one with a smaller bead. Number two is adjust your strike indicator. So normally we want that strike indicator about one and a half times the depth of the water that we're fishing. But sometimes the water's moving too fast or too slow and it's either gonna get caught up or it's just zooming across the water surface. And so we're gonna adjust that indicator. If our flies are too deep, we're gonna adjust that indicator to get closer to our top fly. If our flies are too shallow, we're gonna move it further away. And then the third thing you can do is add or subtract split shot. I can't tell you how many times I've caught fish by adding just a tiny, tiny little split shot onto my standard nymph rig. And so if my flies aren't getting deep enough, I'm gonna add on split shot. And if my flies are too deep, if I'm catching bottom every single cast, I'm gonna take off that split shot. I just wanna emphasize this again. Getting the right depth can turn a meh day of fishing into an epic day on the water. I told you there were two things that we needed to get right when it comes to catching fish while nymphing. Number two is getting the right fly. Now, before you get to the river and you get all excited and you jump right in and you start casting, it totally pays off to slow down, pick up a few rocks, see what bugs are under it, and then pick a fly out of your box using our right fly formula. Match the shape, match the size, match the color, you're in business. If those bugs are living under a rock, it's pretty likely that those fish are munching on them. Now that we've got a good understanding of the strike zone, achieving the right depth and picking the right fly, let's put it all into practice out here on the river.
So in order to be successful in nymphing, we gotta get two things right. Number one, we gotta pick the right fly. So as soon as I got down here to the water, I picked up a few rocks and I found some cool stuff. A case caddis, a couple mayfly nymphs, and I can see some mayflies fluttering around in the air. They're kind of sporadic. It's not like a consistent hatch going on. And then I've seen some yellow sallies too. So I've got a lot of great information to work with. I decided to throw on two classics, a little pheasant tail and a hare's ear, both great mayfly and caddis imitations. And then the second thing I gotta get right is the depth. So I'm thinking about, do I need to add some split shot to this? How heavy or big are my flies? What is the distance between my top fly and the indicator? And so all that's going through my mind as I sit here and I analyze the hole. So my first couple of drifts through this hole, I might get lucky right off the bat. I might be at that perfect depth. I might be right in the strike zone where those fish are hanging out. But really I'm just trying to get a feel for how my flies are moving. Are they ticking bottom? Is my indicator drifting at the same speed as the current? And I'm just trying to get that dialed in and then once that happens, I can start working every single slot and every single hole and start expecting more fish. I don't wanna just launch a cast up there 30 feet right off the bat. I wanna work close to far because if there's any fish right here close by and I launch my fly line up there, the fly line's gonna land right on top of them. It's gonna spook them. It's gonna spook the ones ahead of that and ahead of that and it's almost a domino effect. So I'm gonna work the water that's really close to me, start working my way out into the main current, and I'm gonna be working the bank as well. So it looks like, oh, that was a tick on the bottom. So the flies are getting to the bottom here in this current closer to the bank. See how naturally that bobber's drifting? That's exactly what I want. I'm stripping in line as the, as the indicator is getting closer to me because I don't want drag on the indicator because if I have drag on the indicator, we're gonna have drag on the flies, which we do not want. So nothing, nothing there. I'm gonna take a few steps forward and then I'm gonna get out into the main current a little bit more. Oh, and when we're nymphing, it's really important. If that indicator twitches, if there's any subtle movement on it, set that hook. Boom, fish, see that? Awesome, nice little rainbow. We'll net him, took the pheasant tail. So I hand my rod to our wonderful cameraman and what happens? I'm just messing around. This is, this is just part of fly fishing. You're gonna get tangles, especially as a beginner. You're gonna catch trees. Sometimes you catch more trees than you do fish. A lot of people they'll say after about 30 seconds of trying to untangle it, if you can't just snip it off. I don't really like to try and set up my whole rig again. I just spent two minutes setting it up over there and I don't wanna do it again. So I'll give it a try. And if I can't untangle it, I'll snip it off and I'll set it up again. If you don't use a bounce rig, you don't tangle like this. Isn't that right, Alex? This isn't a bounce rig, okay? Now I've had to untangle quite a few rigs in my lifetime. So I've gotten pretty good at it. One thing I found is you start with the bottom fly and work your way up to the top. And that usually makes it go a little bit faster. So I'm actually holding the line out behind me in between casts. And that actually helps me out a bunch when I'm making the roll cast forward. It adds some tension to the line so that all I have to do is just flick my wrist. Super easy way to cast if you're a beginner. You might've heard this referred to as a water load. Oh, so I'm just gonna work out a little bit further. See if there's any friends hanging out on that outer seam. So we're having a good time, we're catching some fish, but I mean, let's say we're not catching fish. What are some things I'm gonna start doing? 
what are some, what are my troubleshooting options? I would say that the first thing that a beginner wants to change is the flies. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bust that myth because I can't tell you how many times I've just adjusted the depth. And I just have to keep learning this lesson that I'll adjust the depth, I'll add a little bit of split shot, I'll maybe move my indicator a little bit, and a hole that I've run my nymphs through 10, 15 times, I make that little adjustment and boom, I start catching fish. What are the chances I can catch a fish behind that rock? Well, it's 50-50. You either will or you won't. <laughs> All right. You catch one, I owe you a burrito. Totally worth it. We're getting a burrito out of this. Here we go. You know what that means though, the first cast is the most important cast. Here we go. Oh! No, that was definitely a fish. Dang it. You gotta net it for it to count. <laughs> He's right. I gotta net it for it to count. All right, here we go again. Maybe I'll get lucky. Oh, I meant that rock way up there. Yeah, that's the rock I was talking about. You should be fishing dry flies. <laughs> Notice that I'm keeping all of my line off the water and that indicator is just naturally drifting the same speed as those bubbles. Nice drag free drift. Trying to extend that drift as much as possible because you never know when a fish is gonna take it. Boom, fish on. There we go. Right at the end of the drift. Hopefully our little trip to the river today helped clarify some of the confusion you might have had surrounding nymphing and help put those principles that we learned into practice. In the next section, we're talking about big flies and how you can catch big fish. We're talking all about streamers. Mm -hmm.